Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well and having a wonderful week. We're finally getting some nice summer weather here in Chicago, so if that's the same for all of you, hope you're getting some sun and enjoying the weather. This video today, we're gonna to be talking about Anki add-ons and which ones I recommend you use. If you don't know what Anki is and you just stumbled upon this video, I really recommend you check out my video on how to set up Anki and you can use this memory retention program for the MCAT or medical school or anything you might be wanting to study. So definitely check that out and then you'll understand how this video works better because today I'm gonna to be talking about add-ons that I recommend to use and what I think would just help making your Anki experience a little bit better. You don't really need any add-ons technically to use Anki, but they're really helpful I think for a lot of different reasons and I'll talk about that more in this video. For those of you that don't know or haven't seen my videos before, my name is Austin and I'm a current medical student. I provide valuable advice, tips, and strategies to help all of you succeed in your journey through medicine. So if you're interested in that, feel free to subscribe to my channel. There will be a button right here for using your computer, so go ahead and press that and hit the bell for notifications and that will really help me out. So without further ado, let's get started on today's video. Hey everyone, welcome to our video on Anki add-ons. So here I have my Anki program open and you'll see I finished the 618 cards today, those are just my reviews. And you can see all this stuff down here, you might not have that on your Anki program because these are just a bunch of add-ons, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So in this video I'm going to talk about 10 Anki add-ons I think every Anki user should have, whether you're using it for the MCAT, medical school, or whatever you're using Anki for. If you don't know what this stuff is up here, these are just the decks that I'm studying for my medical school education. So if you don't know what this is, just don't worry about it. In a future video, probably in the fall when the new M1s come in, I'm going to make a video that talks about exactly how I study and how to use all of these decks that I have here. But in today's video, I just want to focus on the add-ons. So if you go on Tools and press Add-ons, you'll see all the add-ons that you have installed for Anki. If you have nothing, of course, this will be blank. So today's video, these are the 10 up here, and I'm going to go through them one by one and show you why I recommend these 10 Anki add-ons and how to install them. Some of these ones you'll see down here are disabled. That's because I don't think they're going to be in my top 10 recommendations for Anki add-ons, but I use them for more specific stuff, but maybe we'll talk about that in a different video. So the first add-on we're going to talk about is Advanced Browser. So I'm going to show you on Anki Web where you download these add-ons and how to install them. So pretty much what you'll do is you'll press Get Anki Add-ons and you'll paste a code in here and it'll automatically install your add-on. And so I'll put all the links to these add-ons in the description and show you exactly how to get there. Okay, so now we're on AnkiWeb.net and this link again will be in the description. And so this is Advanced Browser and let me tell you what it does and why I like it. So pretty much when you're browsing your cards in Anki, Advanced Browser will give you different tabs or headings that you can filter things by. So one thing I like a lot is this Create a tab. So if you are using a pre-made deck for the MCAT or medical school, it's really helpful because the person who created the deck a lot of times would create the cards in the same date if they're a similar topic. So when you're looking for cards to unlock or cards to do for your specific lecture or your school material, if you sort them by created, you can often find a lot of the cards next to each other that you'll want to unlock at the same time. So pretty much any Anki add-on, you'll go on the Anki web website like here and scroll down and you'll see a code here and this is the code that you'll copy and paste inside the box I showed you earlier. So when you're back on Anki, you press get add-ons and you paste that code in here and press OK. I'm not going to do that now because I already have it installed, but let me show you a little bit about how Advanced Browser works. So I'm going to go and browse up here on my Anki deck. Okay, so if I press my Anki over here, you can see all the tabs up here. And so basically Advanced Browser gave me these additional tabs such as the one here that says created and that's what I mostly use it for. So if you can see all the cards created on similar dates are all next to each other. And so what I mentioned earlier is that if you're using a pre-made deck all the similar topics will be nearby and I think that makes it helpful to figure out what you want to study. So here you can see I'm looking at some GI stuff so all the peritiditis and the salivary gland stuff are all going to be next to each other here. And so when you're looking for cards unlocking your classes, I think this add-on makes it helpful and that's why I recommend it. 
So the second add-on we're going to talk about today is called Edit Field During Review. Remember you install this the same way as we did Advanced Browser, so press the link for this in the description, press Get Add-ons, and paste the code in there just like before. So as the name implies, Edit Field During Review lets you edit fields during review. So what this means is when you're looking at a card, you can actually make changes to the card instead of going all the way to the browser looking at the card itself. So that's pretty confusing, but let me just show you. So I have one card here, and basically, which thyroid imbalance presents with hyponatremia? This is going to be hypothyroidism. And with edit field during review, I can actually see this cursor. I can go ahead and press into here and add any notes I might have. So notes here, whatever I want, I can just put into there. So when you learn something new in class or you remember a mechanism or have a mnemonic, you want to type it in your Anki card to incorporate it into your studying, this lets you quickly do that while you're doing your Anki flashcards. And I think it's a great add-on to have. Normally, you'd have to go all the way here to edit and then start typing things into your lecture notes and it just takes a lot longer to do this every single time and gets you out of that rhythm with Anki so I'd recommend just using edits during review so you can quickly do that make those changes and keep going on with your Anki flashcards so the third add-on we're going to talk about today is hierarchical tags 2 basically what this is it just organizes your cards so when you're browsing through them they're easier to find especially if you're using a pre-made deck because a lot of those pre-made decks are already tagged according to different subjects and different resources that you might use in medical school or for your MCAT so it's really important to have this one installed so here on Anki Web, you can see where I am, and this is the link that's going to be in the description. And it is just like it shows here. It allows your tagging to be organized in a certain way. You can also use this tagging system to tag different things that you might use Anki for. So if you're taking a class in college, you want to make your own flashcards, you can go ahead and tag them in a specific way, such as putting it to Lecture 1, Week 1, Unit 1, whatever it might be. So it helps you keep all of your Anki decks a little bit more organized. So here I'm in my browse. If you go down, you can see step one which is what I'm studying for you can go through and see all these different tags and this hierarchy tagging add-on allows it to be organized in this way so if I'm looking for things on ischemia within cardiology it makes it a lot easier to find atherosclerosis ischemia and different topics that I might need it for so the fourth add-on we're going to talk about today is image occlusion enhanced and again that's in the description if you want to look at it I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like on Anki web right now so here we are in Anki Web, and this is exactly what I was talking about. So pretty much what Image Occlusion Enhanced Add-on lets you do is make really good flashcards for memorizing tough things like anatomy or here, the limbic system. So it allows you to make these blanks and so that you can test yourself by making flashcards more easily. So in next week's video, I'm going to really talk about how to make flashcards, and that's when you're going to see how to use this add-on much more effectively. But I'll just quickly show you how to use that today and why I think you should install it. So here on Anki, if you want to add a card, you press Add, and when you go in your card type, make sure you have Image Occlusion Enhanced selected, which is what we just installed. And then you'll have this option here to add Image Occlusion. So first you have to get an image on your clipboard, and you can do this by taking a screenshot. Here I have one of my old anatomy lectures pulled up, so if I want to make a card out of this, I'll take a screenshot of it back on Anki I'll press the add image occlusion it'll pull it up automatically so let me zoom in a bit so pretty much you'll have this rectangle feature here if you press on that you can cover up different features you want to test yourself on so the trapezius muscle up here I'll just cover it up and I would normally do this for all the different things on this lecture slide but I'll just do it for one here for sake of time then you'll press this one right here the hide one guess one and now I made one card based on that. So if I close this and see what's made, I'll see a card here and it'll be exactly like we just made it. Here's the lecture figure and it's going to be what's covering this and again it's the trapezius. So that's how you use the image occlusion. Again, I'll talk about this more in next week's video on how to make flashcards, but that's why I think you should install it. So the fifth add-on today we're going to talk about is the load balancer. So pretty much what this is, is it will take your reviews that you have due for Anki and spread it out evenly so you're not doing like 400 cards one day then like 180 the next day but instead it'll balance that out for you. I like this so that each day is pretty similar so I know exactly how long it takes me to do my Anki flashcards and I'm not just getting slammed by cards on a random day. Like if it's my buddy's birthday I don't want to get slammed with like 600 cards, I'd rather know that I'm doing like 300 cards per day and that's consistent. So once you have load balancer installed, there's specific settings you're going to want it set to and most of them are their default settings so I'm just going to show you what I have it installed to and explain to you what that means. 
So once you have load balancer installed, again, link will be in the description. You go on tools and you go on preferences. And you get a new tab called load balancer. And here, I would just set it to exactly how I have it here. Most of this stuff is default, but basically what it means is the max time before is six days, and the max time after is four days. So when you have those different intervals with Anki and all your cards are spread out and due on different days like we talked about before in my other videos on Anki, what this load balancer will do is that if it's due anytime before in six days or anytime after within four days, basically making this 10 day window, it can move your review's due date. So instead of doing it on 10 days from now, it might do it like seven days from now. And it'll just do that so that each day is spread equally and you have a good amount of cards to do each day. So I just like this again to keep things more organized and so you're not overworking yourself on any specific day, which is why I like the work ba the load balancer, sorry. And I can show you what that looks like here on my heat map. Again, I'll show you how to install this heat map towards the end of this video. But if you go on like this week here, you can see 281 cards, 329, 395, 289, 2, 323, pretty much all around like that 2, 300 range. And I like to keep that consistent. So that's what the load balancer does, and I really like it for that. So the next two add ons I want to talk about are the more deck stats and time left, and more overview stats. I'll just put these two together because they're very similar in what their purpose is and why I like them. And it's because they provide you with more information and just let you know how much time you have left, how fast you're going on your reviews, and you know, just more information, which I think is always helpful when you're doing. Anki. So let me go ahead and show you what this looks like on the Anki web website. Okay, so here we are for the more deck stats and time left, and you've probably seen this on my Anki, but it'll just tell you how many cards you've studied and how much time you spent on those cards today. And additionally, it'll also tell you, you know, your average cards per minute and how much time you have left based on the current speed you're going. You know, so for me, it's always nice to know, like, say I have 74 minutes left for today. It's easier for me to tell my friends that, yeah, I'll be free in about an hour and a half or, you know, an hour and 10 minutes because my Anki tells me how fast I'm going according to the rate I'm going at. And also it's good because some days when I'm really tired or I'm just not being efficient, I can see how slow I'm going and it's not like my normal speed and I can try to speed up and just, you know, get back and refocus myself. So that's why I really like this add-on. Similarly, the more overview stats will just give you more numbers such as, you know, what cards you do today, tomorrow, and the total cards. And it's nice because everything is color-coded. So these green ones will be the cards you're reviewing, the red ones are what you're learning, and the blue ones here are what the new cards are. So again, it just lets you know, keeps you more organized, and provides more information. So these are two that I would recommend. So the next add-on we're going to talk about is called Pop-Up Dictionary Beta, and this is one of my favorite, and I probably use this add-on almost every single time I use Anki. So what it is, is basically when you're going through your Anki flashcards, this pop-up dictionary lets you double-click any search term or any word in your Anki deck, and it'll look for that same term throughout your entire deck. So if you're thinking about a flashcard or trying to remember a different card or different fact, you can quickly navigate your Anki deck without having to exit and press the Browse feature. So this one is installed a little bit differently, so I'll go over the installation process right now. Because instead of getting this one on Anki Web, you actually download it from a different site and install it from the file. It's still pretty easy, but let me quickly show you. So here we are for the link for the pop-up dictionary. Again, it'll be in the description. But pretty much some of the Anki add-ons are on different websites. But if you just scroll down and find the one that's most relevant to your Anki version, Anki 2.0 is here and 2.1 or beyond is here. So just click and download whichever one is applicable for you. And then once you get back to your Anki, you just click install file and choose the file you just downloaded. And that's really simple. And whenever you download an add-on, remember you have to restart your Anki to get it going. So once you've downloaded that, again, just press install from file and press the file you downloaded and it'll be installed just like that. So now I'm going to show you why I like pop-up dictionary with a card example in my Anki deck. Alright, so we're going to use the same card example that we were using earlier, and it's which thyroid imbalance presents with hyponatremia, and that's hypothyroidism. So if we use the pop-up dictionary, I can press on any of these words and double-click it and find other instances of this throughout my Anki deck, which is really helpful when you're learning medicine because almost every topic can be related to each other. So hypothyroidism, I double-click it, and the pop-up dictionary is showing me all the other times hypothyroidism is referenced. So I can easily find what I'm looking for and connect it to other cards in my deck, which is extremely useful when studying for medicine or anything you might be using the Anki program for. The next add-on we're going to talk about is the progress bar. Again, this is not really needed, but I like it because it's this big 
blue or greenish bar at the top of your studying and it'll basically just move along as you're going through your deck and so it just helps me stay focused and keep track of how much time I have left and you know it's kind of cool to see the bar keep moving forward as you're finishing up for the day again more of a preference thing but I thought I'd throw it in there and quickly show you how it looks like so I'm using my biochemistry chapter one for the MCAT Anki section that I've showed in other videos and you can see the more overview stats here if you didn't quite clearly see that before but I'll show you the progress bar here. I'm just going to quickly press space bar, so it's going to go kind of quick, but you can see that bar moving up through the top and how that just keeps you kind of focused when you're going through different things. So just thought I'd share that. Alrighty, guys, the last add-on we're going to talk about today is the Reveal Heat Map. It's one of the ones I get the most questions about, and I want to show you all because it's probably one of my favorite add-ons, and it looks really cool. So the Reveal Heat Map is installed similar to the pop-up dictionary. You have to install it from a file. So let me show you that real quick. So it's going to be on this github.com website, the same website you got the pop-up dictionary from, and again, link will be in the description, but you scroll down, you basically see what the add-on is here. You've seen it on my Anki, but it tells you the days you studied, your streak of how many days, your longest days, your daily average, and it's nice because you can see and look ahead at how many cards you might have due in the future. You go down here and you just make sure you pick the 2.11 for Anki 2.1 or 2.0 if you're using an older version and install that file the same way we did before. Alright, so here's my Anki. You can see my heat map here, my streaks, and my daily averages. And what I like the best about the heat map is not only can you see the cards you've done in the past, but you can go ahead and look in the future and see how many cards you have due in different days in the summer, you know, things that you have ahead. So when you're planning out your schedule or your weeks, you can look ahead and see how much you might have to do. And overall, I think it gives a nice aesthetic feel to the program, and I like being able to plan things ahead of time and just stay organized, and I think the heat map really helps me do this. Okay, so we're at the end of today's video. I really hope that what we talked about today in terms of Anki add-ons and just understanding the program better can help all of you in your studying. I think using the right add-ons can really help you improve your studying efficiency and effectiveness. So I really hope that this could be helpful to all of you in reaching those goals. As always, if you have any questions, just feel free to drop a comment below and I will get back to you when I can. Additionally, if you want to interact, discuss, and engage with other pre-med students or ask me more questions directly, you can join my Facebook group. I'll put a link for that in the description. And this is pretty much a place where you can just ask me any questions or talk to other pre-meds about things you might have in your mind. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and healthy and have a great day.